We've just been on a roller coaster of emotions this week. Hey everyone, welcome to Princess Gay. I'm your host, Connie, and today we are here with my blind reaction to Zatoichi and the Chest of Gold. This is our penultimate movie in the Zatoichi movie week this week. And yeah, like I said in the cold open there, it's been a bit of a roller coaster of emotions here. We started off with a, a really good movie, probably my favorite of the set so far, on Monday with a uh, new tale of Zatoichi. Then on Tuesday, we had Zatoichi the Fugitive, which is my least favorite of the, of the film so far. Um, I feel like Zatoichi was extremely out of character, and a lot of the movie just wasn't really well made. Uh, and then on Wednesday, yesterday, we had uh, Zatoichi on the road, which brought it back. And brought back what we loved about Zatoichi. His kindness, his personality, the masseur bit. And still gave him a little bit more of an aggressive streak than he had in the first three films. But kept it within the bounds of his character not to mention it was just an entertaining movie so it's like I've, it's kind of been like very back and forth this week so far and i hope that doesn't continue <laughs> i i don't want this movie to be bad we we don't need another bad movie um so i hope that we break the streak and that this one ends up being another good one now Zatoichi and the Chest of Gold. This title is very interesting to me because Zatoichi doesn't seem like someone who would go after something like that. Like some kind of like, I don't know, talked about treasure chest or something. We know he does value money. <laughs> I mean, anyone would. Money is unfortunately necessary to survive in a society and that includes societies from this time period he he understands that and we even saw in the last movie how he got some extra money out of the guy he was massaging and stuff he he ordered some extra money because uh of the way the guy had treated him and that's the kind of thing like i can believe he would do like he, he's normally pretty humble and doesn't ask for exorbitant prices and whatnot. But if someone is clearly using him, if someone is clearly trying to manipulate him, or if someone, hell, tries to kill him in the middle of a massage, he's going to ask for more money. He's going to raise his prices because it's like, you know, you're going to fuck with me, I'm going to fuck with you. I think he actually did it twice in the last movie. Because there was the guy who was giving the massage... And then the one uh, Yakuza leader, right? I, I believe he uh, raised his price for him, too. Um, he was originally, I, I believe it was going to be 10 gold coins, but then he uh, went up to 20. And he said, my normal price is 30, but I guess I'll settle for 20, basically. <laughs> and it's like, you sassy Sue. <laughs> like, I, I, I kind of like it when Zatoichi can be a bit sassy. It, it, it's... It's kind of really fun when he's a bit sassy. Now, I want to touch on that bit for a second. And what I what I mean is the name. Because I, a lot of the time, call him Ichi. But then there's other times I call him Zato Ichi. And something I've kind of noticed in the movies, most people tend to call him Zato Ichi because they don't know him but when people start to get to know him and especially like him they start referring to him as just ichi like um uh oh, i can't remember the girl's name in the last movie uh, i t i think it started with an m but the the girl in the last movie who ichi was trying to get to uh her home and everything the kind of motivating character you could say <laughs> she referred to him as ichi because she had grown to like him and grown to care about him and she saw how good he was. And 
Zato, I, I did look it up, and Zato is like the um, the honorific, I guess you could say, that denotes like the lowest rank, the lowest kind of uh, rank of status within like blind people, I guess you could say. So something like that. I, I, I mean, I, I could look it up for the exact... Uh, specification here let me let me see if i can find that real quick zato prefix meaning trying to find it here I found it before and I, I don't remember exactly how I found it but oh jeez If I, if I can't find it again, I'm not going to spend too much time. Satoichi name meaning. Okay. It's a combination of the words Zato no Ichi, which translates to Ichi the Masur, and Zato, which is a title. So not like an honorific specifically, but a title and a Japanese slang term for a blind person. Okay, so it's like it's like a slang term and it's it's used to denote like uh yeah, Zato is the lowest of the four official ranks in the Tadoza, a historical guild for blind men. So it's like a guild rank. Okay. It's a guild rank from feudal Japan uh and he's like the lowest of the low basically is the idea. Um, it's supposed to basically show him, show that he's not very well respected and stuff, which we get from the movies. Um, like, people respect and understand how skilled he is with a sword, but in terms of, like, his blindness and, uh, being a masseur and everything, he's seen as kind of low class, like, super low class. And... You can definitely see that in the films. So so it's 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 definitely translated well. I just wanted to look up the exact uh exactly what it means to get to make sure I got it right, you know. Um but yeah, so it it it's basically a slang term that denotes it, it's a slang term and a title that denotes that he's the lowest of the low in terms of rank. So, yeah. Uh, I, I wanted to bring this up because I kind of switch between saying Zatoichi and Ichi a lot of the time. It's technically more respectful to just call him Ichi. The reason I sometimes default to Zatoichi is just because of the movie titles. <laughs> if I'm being completely honest, just because the movies are referred to as Zatoichi and most characters tend to refer to him that way, sometimes I refer to him that way and sometimes I would just refer to him as Ichi. So I'm probably just going to continue switching back and forth. It, it's it's going to be hard for me to like stick to one when both names are actively used. And the thing is, he doesn't seem to like hate people calling him Satoichi. He doesn't seem to like resent it. He seems like okay with it, and I think a lot of that admittedly comes from his self hatred. <laughs> he has a lot of self hatred, <laughs> even if he hides it behind jokes and a kind persona and everything a lot of the time. Which is very real. <laughs> a lot of people do that. A lot of people do that. I I can speak from experience. Um, but moving on, let's not talk about my problems. Uh, I'm very interested to see how this chest of gold comes into play. Is it going to be something like the like an, an a yakuza group or something like a boss is after? 
I'm wondering about that. And, and maybe, like, Ichi's going to somehow get involved with that, which just tends to happen with him. I don't know. I don't know what this movie is about. I don't know what any of these are about before seeing them, because I never hear anyone talk about them. So, we're just going to get into it and find out. But before we do, I do want to remind you all that we have a lot of great content to check out on the channel. Between Monday and Friday, we have a plethora of awesome series reactions, and on Monday specifically, we also have YouTube reactions, or at least YouTube adjacent. Shorts, specials, mini-series that just don't have a lot of episodes, or, <laughs> surprise, surprise, YouTube videos. Anything that doesn't quite fit into a normal series or movie reaction goes in that slot. And speaking of movie reactions, uh, this week you obviously know we're doing a Zatoichi week, five days, five movies between Monday and Friday, but normally our movie reactions are on Saturday and Sunday, and that will continue starting next week. Um, I pre-record the movie reactions during the week, upload them on the weekend, just so that every day has some sort of reaction content going on for it. We also have Let's Play content on the channel, and we're currently going through a couple uh, pretty good ones. We're playing through Horizon Forbidden West, and we're posting parts to that every other day. So you'll see a part come up today on Tuesday, or by the time you're seeing this, you already will have. Um, and then there will be another part on Saturday, and then Monday, and so on and so forth. Every other day. And then we have Poppy Playtime. This one is on Saturdays, and because I'm not that great at um, puzzle solving, if I'm being honest, um, I was able to have enough recording for this uh, for the first chapter, because that's, all of, that's available on PS5, to be able to cut this into multiple parts. So we have Poppy Playtime going for a few episodes uh, for a few weeks here, and then we'll go back to Anno Mutation I'm right after. But Poppy Playtime is also a donation reward Let's Play for Venom. And um, if you want to know how to donate for a future PS5 Let's Play, go to the channel, go to the channel search, and all in one search, type in June Double Reward Month PS5. That should lead you to the correct video that'll tell you everything you need to know in regards to how to donate for a future PS5 Let's Play. Or you could just, I don't know, ask in the comments, you could go to the Discord and ask me there or on other social media. Whatever is best for you, whatever is most comfortable for you, um, I'm good with anything pretty much. But that being said, let us get on with the reaction and see what Zatoichi and the Chest of Gold has in store for us. So, when the screen fades to black, pause this redirect and go to the description below. Follow the link to the reaction because, yes, we do redirect all reactions on this channel. I understand. You don't want to have to go through all this extra work, click all these links, just to get to the reaction. You'd rather it be right here on YouTube. It's easier, it's better, and even if it's chopped up, it's just, you know, an easier-to-watch experience, especially if you're going through a bunch of these and marathoning them. But, YouTube has these copyright issues. It's pretty shitty with copyright, I would even say. And because of that, it's really hard to get this stuff onto YouTube. It's just not really safe to do because of issues like channel strikes and even channel terminations. Unfortunately, I have dealt with both of those in the past. I really don't want to deal with them again. Like, calling them a hassle is honestly putting it very, very lightly. It's a mess. So, in order to keep the channel safe, I push all the reactions off to a different site. It allows for things to remain safer, and luckily, you only have to click one link. It's just down in the description below. Not a lot of extra work. I know it's still more than you'd like, but... It's only one thing, per video at least. It, it, it's pretty easy, pretty, pretty, pretty understandable to go through. <laughs> um, that being said, there is also the added bonus that because of this, all of you, every single one of you gets to see the full unedited reaction completely free. That's right, entirely free. No paywalls at all, you don't have to sign up for a subscription to Patreon, and you don't even have to sync up your own copy of the uh, movie, in this case, but or show, or whatever else we're reacting to. You don't have to sync up your own copy at all. It's right there in the reaction that is linked to in the description. 
All you do, like I said, click that link, go to it. It's all right there in that in that one video. And I think that's pretty cool because not a lot of reaction channels here on YouTube are able to do that due to very valid reasons, of course. Um, whether it's monetization or copyright or other issues, a lot of these reactors make this a full-time like job that they need to get paid for and everything, so they really can't do that. And that's reasonable. But I do pride myself on being a channel that is able to give that to you that is able to provide you with the full unedited reaction for entirely 100% free. I think that's pretty cool. But you you tell me. And after you watch the reaction, come back here to the redirect and resume play. Because after it fades to black and then fades back in, everything from that point forward will be my afterthoughts and will not only contain spoilers to the movie, but also just my general thoughts on it, how it compares to the others, maybe even some stuff related to the channel. You never know. It's always worth checking out just to be safe. But all of that being said, thank you as always so, 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 so much for tuning in. And for now, I'll see you at the reaction. And we are back and we'll begin with spoilers in three, two, one, now. So I wouldn't say this is like one of my favorite Zatoichi films. But I, I don't think I would say it's one of my least favorite necessarily either. I don't know. It, it's I haven't exactly been ranking these. Maybe maybe I should like figure out a ranking for all of these. I just know that New Tale Zatoichi is still my favorite, and Zatoichi the Fugitive is my least favorite. I, I'd probably have to figure out the rest of them. Um, this one I I guess you could say I is kind of towards the middle for me maybe. It's just, like, there's good aspects, but then there's some things that are kind of distracting. Such as the fact that, um, there's a lot of very dramatic zoom-ins and pans, and they tried some really, like, unique, uh, directions with it. Like, uh, having certain shots in, like, pure black and all. Like, you see the guys, uh, talking and everything in pure black, and they're, like faces are overlaid over it or like in the opening credits and all being very different from the other films it's they, they tried to do something there there's even that part where it's like it zooms it, it like zooming past all the scenery stops on these people talking zooms back the other way and it's just like i get that they're trying different things and that's that's fine but some things just don't work and a lot of that was not working for me um Ichi was was good in this. Like, I have no problems with how Ichi was portrayed. I, I feel like I almost have to say that at this point, after how poorly he was portrayed in Zatoichi the Fugitive. Um, I have no problems with that aspect in this film. He, he was very much portrayed right. Um, I just feel like the, the story felt a little cluttered i guess you could say like you have the magistrate you have manji you have chuji you have all of this stuff happening all of these different sides and it's like yeah it's not the first zatoichi film to have a bunch of different sides in one film but it just felt like it wasn't like as put together as some of these others it just it felt like the the different elements didn't mesh as well as they do in some of these other films. And one of the biggest places where this is noticeable is Chuji. Because unless I'm mistaken, Chuji gets off the mountain, is almost right away assailed by uh, the, this uh, a group sent by Manji and the magistrate and all. All of his men are killed, except for, like, I think two. And he's left obviously shaken and distraught by this. And then we never see him again. We never see him again after that. It's just, it, like, the movie forgets about him, almost. He's mentioned when Ichi uh, brings back the chest and everything. It's like, okay, now me and Chuji's names are cleared. But it's like... 
Chuji never gets like any kind of revenge. He never gets any kind of like a uh, happy ending, really, outside of his name being cleared. There's there doesn't there doesn't seem to be any kind of resolution to his side of things, and it makes it feel really depressing, honestly. Like you could almost take it to mean like he just broke and like became a shell of his former self after uh after all his men were slaughtered like that and it's just like it just feels unsatisfying in the end um also i don't feel that both manji and the magistrate were needed i feel like having both of them again it, it made it feel, feel very cluttered you really only needed one of them. And honestly, it would be the Magistrate. Manji was a waste of time. He was a complete waste of time. His character amounted to nothing. Why was he even there? If they took out him, it would also probably give a little more time to have a more satisfying final fight. Like, I understand the idea of like, oh, this guy is just scum. He looks down on Ichi so hard. And when he comes in for the battle, he, you know, uses this cheap uh, attack to drag Ichi around on the dirt and fuck him up from that. And so he, when the actual sword fight begins, it's over so quick because he doesn't deserve anything more. I get, I get that. But it's like it's so unsatisfying to watch just from a viewership perspective. Because it's like we want the we want the final fight to be cool. We want it to be entertaining. As much as I didn't like Satoichi the Fugitive, the final fight was great in that. Like I, like I've said before, um, plenty of times at this point since uh, we did the Fugitive, um, the action was something I never had an issue with with that film, and. The final fight was genuinely really good. But here, it's like not. It's really unsatisfying. And the fact that the movie just ends super suddenly, it's like it's not the first time one of these movies has ended just out of nowhere like that. But it's like, okay, Ichi's just walking, like, I guess back towards the village because you hear the music playing and everything, the celebration beginning. He's all bloodied and, and fucked up from, uh, you know, being dragged around and everything. And being whipped at uh, constantly by this asshole. But it's like... That's such a, like, just unsatisfying ending. Even if you're, you're to believe that Ichi is going to fulfill his promise and go back to the village now that the music and singing has begun... It's just like, it just doesn't feel like a happy ending. And maybe that's what they were going for. Maybe they're going for something bittersweet. It's like, okay, the villagers got their money back. They're free from all of this pain, all of this, uh, you know, hell. But Ichi is just, you know, he's just gone through it. <laughs> And mind you, it's not the first movie that's, like, had a bittersweet ending like that. But it just, it feels more bitter than sweet. And you can do that well. My favorite of these movies did that well. <laughs> New Tale of Zatoichi had a very good ending. And it was very bitter. He like he had to kill his master. He didn't get the girl because he didn't feel worthy of her. Because the master was his his uh, the master was her brother. It's like things left off on a very sour note in that movie, but it felt more earned. It felt like it it was more tightly written. Here it just feels like oh let's just you know be fucking mean to Ichi. It just, it feels so mean-spirited comparatively. Um, and I don't want to just harp on these negatives, though. Like, the movie was uh, very interesting. 
Um, it had a it had a different kind of story than I think we've usually seen with this kind of thing. And the idea of it, like I said, very much reminded me of Arlong Park in One Piece, which, as I stated, is a very good thing. Um, for those who don't know, Arlong Park is one of my favorite arcs of One Piece. Like, one of the best, in my opinion, in terms of its writing, characterization, and just how much I emotionally connected to it. Nami's story, saving up all of those berry to free Kokoyashi Village from Arlong, and then having it stolen from her by the Marines who are working with Arlong, is just an amazingly emotional tale. It leads to Nami becoming so distraught, so angry, that she starts stabbing the tattoo on her shoulder. She just starts stabbing into it with ferocity while angrily and, and just depressingly shouting out Arlong's name over and over and crying. Which leads to one of the best moments in the entire series. Luffy giving her his hat and telling her that he will help her. That he may not know everything that's going on, but that he's seeing... A beloved friend of his cry and that's all he needs to know it's one of the best moments in the entire series and I definitely see the the comparisons here even though it's not exactly the same there's definitely some obvious differences such as the fact that the entire village had spent all this time raising up this money instead of just one person and the way it was stolen uh, back from them was different and everything. There's still a lot of similarities. And the one who helped them in the end wasn't like this notable friend of the village or anything. Though he wasn't friend of Chuji. You have to give him that much. Like they, they were very much friends. Um, nonetheless, he decided to help them. Not only to clear his and Chuji's names, but because he genuinely felt sorry for this village. For these people who had their livelihoods taken from them. Their hope of freedom taken. That's all that he really needed to hear. Like, of course, he said it was to clear him and Chuji's name, but let's be honest, it was more than that. It was. Um... So the comparisons are definitely very much there. And, and like I said, um, Eiichiro Oda, when writing One Piece, when he created the character of Fujitora, he was based off of Shintaro Katsu, who plays Ichi. And this is not like obviously the first time Oda's based a lot of characters throughout the entire run on celebrities, on actors and whatnot. Um, all of the admirals are based on actors, for example every single one of them and so it would not surprise me in the slightest if i found out that arlong park had some basis on this movie it wouldn't surprise me at all um but even if it doesn't even if it's just kind of a coincidence the fact that they are similar is still like really cool and it still does you know, act as a major plus to me. On top of that, I really liked the scene where Ichi was, you know, confronting and talking to uh, Chuji. Chuji being so angry and upset at him uh, for, for Ichi killing his men, but then when he finds out, he's super repentant and, like, sorry but you could tell like even when he's angry when he when he's yelling at ichi and, and demanding you tell him the truth you can tell it's just because he's hurt because ichi is a friend of his he sees him as someone he could trust and now this has just like thrown him off completely it's caused him great pain because of how he's already lost all of these men how he's already you know brought down to this small of a number it's taken a massive toll on him. And so now 
with a supposed friend killing a couple of his men, he feels extremely betrayed. It's it's a really well done scene where it's like even without telling us that it shows it, it's 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 show don't tell. It, it it shows us that through um through Chuji's performance, the actor who portrayed him did a great job at expressing that in his voice, in his expression, in just the way he he pleaded almost with Ichi to tell him why he would do something like that. And Shintaro Katsu's performance in response, the fact that he let, um, the fact that Ichi let Chuji vent and, and let him speak his mind before telling him anything, I think that was smart of him. He didn't want to interrupt him. He wanted him to let that out because it's healthy to let out your emotions. It, it's it's not good to bottle it up and so he wanted him to let it out so he could tell it to him when he's like you know at that point more receptive you could say um and then the two men you know try to attack or kind of owned and then own up to everything they did and chuji's just like oh well i feel like shit now <laughs> Um, but instead, but he, he even offers up his life to Ichi, but Ichi's like, no, bitch, live. That's how, that's how you get back at them. Or not really get back at them, but that's how you prove yourself to the village. That's how you, you make things better by living. It's a, it's an amazing scene. And, but like I said, it is kind of undercut by the fact that after all his men are slaughtered, Chuji just disappears from the movie. It's just, it really does suck because it's like, they really could have done something great with that. Like maybe, maybe Ichi was struggling in the final fight against, uh, against the whip guy whose name I can't remember right now. Um, maybe Ichi's struggling against that and then, uh, Chuji comes in and helps him out and even like brings up the fact that he was told to, to continue living and that's why he's there helping him. That would have actually been super satisfying. Yeah, it would have been a little cheesy. Absolutely. But let's be honest, there was a lot in this movie that was cheesy. <laughs> that would have honestly fit right in. And it would have actually just made it, like, a lot better. And again, this movie's not bad. It's just mid compared to some of the others. It just doesn't really hold a candle to uh, other films in this series. But it's not as bad as, like, Zatoichi the Fugitive by any means. So it's just, it's just one of those films that has some issues with it. Could have been better. But for what it was, I can still appreciate it. I can still enjoy it. And, yeah, I still had a good time with this one. Um, so, that leaves us with one. We only have one more movie for Zatoichi Week that will be tomorrow, and that is Zatoichi's Flashing Sword. Um, I almost kind of wish these movies had more creative titles. They're, they're like, so simple. Um, like, at, at the beginning, like, the tale of Zatoichi, uh, the tale of Zatoichi continues, and then the new tale of Zatoichi. It's like, I, I kind of like that. It kept to a theme and everything, but then it starts changing up, and it's just like, Zatoichi the Fugitive. Okay, that's a fine title. Um, and it does represent the the idea of the movie. Um, even if the movie's not good, in my opinion. It's still, like, the title still works and everything. Then you have Zatoichi on the road. It's like, okay, that's descriptive, but kind of boring. It's like there's other things you could have named this movie. Uh, and, and now you have uh, Zatoichi in the chest of gold. It's like, again, descriptive. It works. But it's also kind of boring. <laughs> and then you have Zatoichi's flashing sword. It's like, we know Zatoichi has a flashing sword. We understand that's his thing. The speed with his cane sword. It's like, you don't need to have that as the title. 
I feel like that is such a that 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 completely hides anything about the film and just like it's just like a duh moment. It's it's not the best title. It's not the most creative title. But that doesn't mean the movie's gonna be bad. We shall find out tomorrow. Um in the meantime, tell me what you thought of this film in the comments below. No spoilers for any of the future ones, of course. Um, and before we close this off, I do want to remind you all that we have a lot of great content to check out on the channel. Between Monday and Friday, we have a plethora of awesome series reactions, and on Monday specifically, we also have YouTube, or at least YouTube-adjacent reactions. Anything that doesn't quite fit into a normal series or a movie reaction goes in this slot. And speaking of movie reactions, outside of specialty weeks such as this Zatoichi week, we normally put up movies every Saturday and Sunday. Um, they are pre-recorded during the week and uploaded on the weekend just so that every day has some sort of reaction content going on for it. We also are doing a couple of Let's Plays on the channel. We have Horizon Forbidden West every other day. So you'll see one today, you'll see one on Saturday and on Monday, and so on and so forth like that. Every other day. Uh, we also have Poppy Playtime on Saturdays. This is a donation reward Let's Play for Venom. And if you want to know how to donate for a future PS5 Let's Play, go to the channel, go to the channel search, and in one search type in June Double Reward Month PS5. It should take you to the correct video that'll lead you, uh, or that'll tell you everything you need to know regarding how to donate for a future, P P bleh, future PS5 Let's Play. So... That all being said, thank you so, so much, as always, for tuning in. And for now, I'm Connie, and I'm signing off. See y'all next time.